The presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress, Dumebi Kachiku, has accused some persons within the ADC, describing them as criminals. Kachiku was reacting to the ADC's endorsement of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and his running mate, Dati Baba Ahmed, for presidency. According to him, the party is being divided into three groups and received money from other political parties. The endorsement came on the heels of a grand coalition for the Obi Dati presidency. Well, joining us slide to discuss this is Ahmed Buhari, he's the vice presidential candidate of the ADC. Ahmed, it's, going, it's good to have you join us. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Great. Um, again, we're here talking about some um, issues within your party. Uh, a, a few uh, months ago, the, the, um, your then um, chairman of the party um, had issues. Uh, he had taken a few members of your party who had said that they were um, deposing your presidential candidate and taking the ticket away from him. And here we are again. Uh, a faction of your party is going the way of the PDP and one is going the way of the Labour Party. Um, what exactly is going on in the ADC? Uh, I mean, this is just a few days to the elections. So you didn't add that one other party is going with the APC as well. Oh, so, uh, if the faction endorsed the PDP on Saturday, another faction endorsed the APC on Sunday, and the last faction endorsed the Labour Party on Monday. And this is what we've been talking about for months now. I remember you and I on this um, station had a few conversations with regards to our feelings about what might happen uh, at the end of the journey, and exactly so, uh, we, we've been beginning to experience what is happening. But you know, as much as it comes as a, uh, as much as it doesn't come as a shock, um, and then it's funny to have so many parts of the party endorsing different political parties. I think the most important thing that we must realize here is um, is the way I feel pity for these men within the party. This is what they've always done. They they have positioned themselves in this party to always come to this point of an election year to negotiate with candidates who will give them money. And I think it's poverty. I've met with these men, I've sat with them, and the bottom line to all their problems is how much money can we make from this process? And that is why I keep talking to people that regardless of the fact that you want to effect change through politics, make sure you have a day job. Now, that day job is important for you because at the end of the day, that is what you will rely on, not on politics money. For these guys, this is what they've always done. It is hunger as it is. Uh, I also try to tell people that INEC has been complicit in all of these uh, issues that we've had because from day one, we started writing INEC with regards to the writings on the wall that we could actually read at that time to let them know that, look, the tenure of this National Working Committee has expired. We need to have a national convention that would help us elect new uh, party officials and INEC decided to turn a deaf ear only until 10 years ago. INEC invited myself and the Board of Trustees Chairman, Senator Akwashiki, with other members of our party to have an arbitration where they invited the, of course, the faction that just endorsed the Labour Party to say, you know what, let us resolve our differences outside courts. Because already the Justice in Yaku's um, um, court served us, um, uh, served also, the letter for our victory on the 20th of December, where all our prayers were granted under our council, Chief uh, Mike Ozakume Chambers. Mm. So I think what is important here is, even at that arbitration, I, I, even though we're sitting on opposing sides, during the break time, we still had people from that other side, of course, this faction that went to endorse the uh, Labour Party, come over to me to say, can we get something? Uh, what can I find? I need to transform myself back to where I came from. So it's just poverty and we need to really stop this from happening because it's beyond Kachiku and Ahmed Buhari. We have senators, we have people who bought forms as governors, we have people who bought forms as rep members, and as, as they're campaigning around the country or around their constituency, they're just getting to find out that the, the supposed apex body of the party has gone to endorse somebody else. How do you want them to feel? If you know that primarily you are going to endorse somebody else from the beginning, why sell forms? These are people who have sold forms in the millions. There were about 10 presidential candidates buying forms at 25 million naira each. We had gubernatorial candidates from all the states. We had House of Rep members. And you put all of these monies together only for a plan to endorse a bigger candidate at the end of the day so that you, stage one, sell forms, stage two, 
you look around and see who is the candidate that can likely pull a campaign and keep milking him so he gets to a point where he cannot give you anything anymore. And then stage three, you go ahead and endorse uh, a, a political party that was going to give you money. The main fact that I saw them endorsing PDP, APC, and Labour, I can tell you categorically that it's the same block of people sharing themselves around to see how much money they can get from around. Okay. And so anybody who is dealing with these people and I keep keeping quiet at the same time, it comes as a shame to me. I'm really wondering what you want INEC to do now because, of course, INEC has his job cut out for it. But then I have no, a question. Uh, just hold on. I'll, I'll let you get to that. But I remember when this issue first raised its ugly head, I did ask you um, at the time when you were saying, oh, the chairman of the party had held sway for 17 years plus or something like that. And I asked, I remember asking you, before you and your principal picked this party to run on its platform, how much background check did you do? Because this again goes to tell if it was this was done hastily, out of desperation, or there were corners that were being cut. So again, it points back to you. I want you to ask, answer that question that I asked you a few months ago. You, you, I'm, I'm going to respond to that question, but I'm going to tell you why INEC is important in all of this. INEC is the custodian of the constitution of our party. INEC, is the, INEC has a constitution that guides all the political parties. And it is based on that constitution that you can tell if a party chairman has exceeded his time in office. INEC's decision to turn an eye to that makes them part of this whole deal that has been going on for 17 years. Now, back to your question with regards to did we do this hastily or not, I will tell you one thing for sure. Maybe we didn't do our due diligence properly. Maybe we are falling mugu, like they say. Maybe we've been scammed, like everybody talks about it around this area. But the truth still remains that this was the party that had King Samogalu. This was the party that had Patrick Tomi. This was the party that had, at one point in time, Peter Obi trying to be part of it. You understand? And this was the party that had Dumebi Kachiko Monye. And through the vigorous process, Dumebi Kachiko emerged. And some people might say, how did Dumebi beat all of those people? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Dumebi played the politics like it should be played. How do you play the politics? Make yourself available to the people. I remember during his campaign to win the primaries, he made himself so available that the people built that confidence in the fact that this is somebody that indeed we can truly relate with. And most of his support that he got was from Northern Nigeria because then with me, I was able to walk around to see that the Northern part of the delegates were going to make him a match. And so did he. Importantly, I want you to understand that whether we've been scammed, whether we didn't do pure good diligence, it's important for, for INEC in its part as the umpire to say, you know what? If we're getting letters from these people saying that they fear that this party is going to negotiate in an era where we're trying to build our democracy, then indeed they should have stepped in long before 10 days ago when they were asking us to have an arbitration outside courts. Mm. Interesting. I want to go back again in time because, you see, these conversations are all coming back to me like a flood. Um you talked about the fact that your candidate did due, due diligence. I remember the last time, the first time I had this conversation, I had a spokesperson for uh, Kingsley Mogalu who uh, alleged that your candidate had given monies, had bribed his way to the top, being that he wasn't even in the top five when the, the, you know, for the running for this ticket and he came out of nowhere and became the presidential candidate. Talking about also how untrustworthy members of the board of trustee of the party were at that time. And here we are months down the line. You're making almost similar allegations of the fact that, oh, you probably have been scammed. Oh, you did due diligence. But could, what do you think would be going through the minds of Kingsley Mogalu and, um, you know, Moye right now? Because these are some of the oh. same allegations they made about how crooked, allegedly, some of the members of the party leadership were at the time. So I will tell you very clearly, yeah? I remember that interview I had with you on the station. I remember the connectivity from my own end did not let me have the conversation, especially to tackle the allegations from the spokesperson of, from King Mogalu's um, camp. But what is most important is King Mogalu, Patrick Tomi, and everybody who feel um, pain with regards to whatever transpired in this party should understand that we've always been on the same side. And for them to keep thinking that maybe is their problem, it's a wrong assumption. Because indeed, maybe had no issue with anybody. 
when he came into the race, and like I told you, one of the critical things that he did was to make himself available. And let me tell you something. As much as we keep talking about this leadership problem in this country, there's a huge followership concern. And the followers are constantly looking for individuals that they believe they can penetrate, which is why some of us are parading half working men as candidates for major political parties because the belief, the belief is that if we have those kinds of people, then indeed we can manipulate them. Uh, Ahmed, I think that um, we've lost connection with you, but if you can hear me, Ahmed, can you hear me? I think that we've lost that connection. So, the more you make yourself available, the people will laugh with you. I know. Go ahead, go ahead. We lost the connection with you for a second, but go ahead. Yeah, I was, I, I was trying, I was trying to tell you that indeed most of the people within the party will tell you at that time that oh, he's to be like him, but he was speaking too much French, he was speaking too much English. The people want you to come down to that level. And that is the only way that someone like Oshibajo did not does imagine. Mean, the just for clarity, party. for just for clarity, what does it mean by coming down to their level? Because again, I heard that people took as low as twenty dollars, allegedly, uh, at the party primaries from the, your the, candidates. The, the problem, the, and, and, the and problem, that and that problem, other the, candidates the problem, refused to pay money. And, and, and I'm wondering if this is what it means because the others were speaking yeah. grammar, but then your candidate was, you know, a bit, you know, um, open-handed. Could that have been the case? So I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something, yeah. Uh, I can hear just you. Just a Go second, ahead. I don't know. Go ahead, I can hear you. Ahmed, we can hear you. Just go ahead. Uh, I think that we have also lost that connection again. Um, Ahmed, but if you can hear me, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you All now. Right. Can it, you hear it, me now? Yeah, go ahead. I really want to hear what you mean by coming down to the level of the people. In politics, a few things are very crucial. People want to see that available resources can drive a campaign. But most importantly, and I keep telling politicians, what the people really want is somebody that is available, somebody that can communicate with, somebody that's going to take your phone call, somebody that's going to be present for those meetings, somebody that is going to probably pick you up as they're leaving meetings and say, I'm going to give you a ride home. I remember I saw somebody who said, the reason why I voted for Jimmy Catch was because on a particular day after our meeting, as he drove out of the meeting area, he saw me and he opened his G-Wagon vehicle for me to enter. That was the first time I entered the G-Wagon. People have different reasons for supporting an, an individual, but fundamentally, the drive is always around how open you are to them. And remove your mind from these money issues, because indeed, King Salmodalu made transfers to these people, and that finds him, and, and those are evidences to show that he actually gave money along the line so that he could be, um, could be voted for during the primaries. Okay, finally. I hope you didn't miss me there. Yes, I did it. Finally, with all of these things that have happened, your ending issue. You don't want to talk about it, whether it is true that he gave money? Oh, no. I, I remember when we had that conversation, um, his spokesperson had said that the party asked him to give a certain amount of money, um, that all the candidates were asked to give a certain amount of money so that the primaries would hold. And it was for also for delegates. That is unconstitutional. He was not supposed to do that. Again. He's doing that. Again, I'm not. I'm well. not going to be here to hold brief for Kingsley Mogolo because he's not here to no, respond you can, you can, to that. Now I that can. I have better connection, you can invite the spokesperson that we can talk about that. Well, but 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 I I cannot be holding brief for him. So because we don't have time, I want to move quickly to uh, other matters. Now, with all of these unending issues emanating from the ADC and knowing that we're a few days away from the election, how do you convince? How do you hope to convince the average Nigerian to vote for the ADC? Because now you well, have put because you have put the credibility of the members of your board of trustee on the line right now. A lot of people are questioning how credible your party is and if it's going to even be able to uh, stand till the election day. I mean, we still have the governorship and other um, so, you know, so tickets. Can to you hear me, Marianne? Go ahead, please. I think what is important here and what you're not paying attention to, I told you the court served the judgment, granting all of our prayers and sacking these men that parade themselves as members of the National Working Committee. So to start with, those guys were imposters. They are nowhere on the party platform, okay. to start with. 
Okay. Now, anybody who's giving them money did that at some peril. But most importantly, it is beyond the maybe Kachuko and myself, like I told you. We have people running, we have people contesting. As much as we are on the ballot, what is most important for us to do is to stand firm for all of those people. A woman sent me a message earlier today. It was a long message telling me how she feels bad that she has spent so much money to campaign, she has spent so much money to buy the form. Rafa Wostra and his cohorts have, of course, you know, placed different levels on her over the months. Only for them to go and endorse another candidate while she's in Delta State contesting and campaigning. I tell you one thing, we all have to work together to ensure that these kinds of things are stopped in our policy. The only way we can give hope to the people is for small parties like this to get their act together and truly go into those contests with the intention to win and not to double around the people's minds and resources. Okay. Well, better said um, this way uh, than any other way. But I want to say thank you. Um, Ahmed Buhari is the vice presidential candidate of the ADC. Always a pleasure to have you join us. Thank you. All right. And that's the show tonight. Don't forget, uh, you are to make sure that you show up at your polling unit on Saturday, the 25th of February, to cast your vote. But what must you do and what must you know? Now, don't forget, um, several people still are yet to understand where their polling unit is. Just go on INEX website. Um, use the information, your voter identification number, uh, impute it, and then you can find out where your polling unit is. So that way, you know where to cast your vote come Saturday. Don't sit at home. Don't sit on the fence. Use your PBC because that is your passport to a new Nigeria. I'm Mary Anacle. See you tomorrow. Good night.